I'd love to tell you that all it takes is to get a meeting with a major donor and all your dreams will come true. But I can't do that. You'll run into obstacles and roadblocks along the way. No worries, I'm here to help. Today I'm going to share with you the six primary obstacles you'll face in donor meetings and what you need to do to overcome them. Stay tuned. I was in my first few years working for a nonprofit organization when I reached out to a man and asked if I could come by his home to share with him about what our organization did and how he could partner with us financially. He asked if he could come to our home instead. That was very strange and highly unusual, but I agreed. When he arrived, I started my presentation as I would normally. When I got to the part where I explained that it was the policy of our organization that all staff raised their own funding for their salary, he cut me off and he said, well, ironically, that's exactly what I wanted to help you with. I believe I can take that entire burden off you. Immediately, I thought he might be interested in helping us with the entire amount each year. Not quite. He proceeded to share with me how I could earn all I needed by selling products under him in a multi-level marketing strategy. My heart immediately sank. This was not the outcome I expected. I explained to him that our organization doesn't allow staff to have alternative employment income and that being his downstream was not in the cards for us. He immediately got up and walked out, apparently more disappointed than us. <laughs> well, that was quite the meeting. Do you have a similar story? A time a donor surprised you in a not so pleasant way? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you have yet to have the pleasure of experiencing friction with a potential donor, don't hold your breath. There are literally hundreds of landmines waiting for you on the road to and during a donor appointment. That said, you don't need to be anxious about those obstacles. Let's dive into some proven strategies to overcome them. Obstacle number one, the Debbie Downer. Just like the old SNL character Debbie Downer, there are always people who think they are helping you by painting the most negative picture or scenario possible, calling it reality. You will typically experience this when you're first reaching out to a donor to set up the face-to-face -face appointment. The person's not actually the donor themselves, but a third party. It could be a colleague, someone from your organization, another donor, a friend, or even a neighbor. They're well-meaning, but they give you every reason possible why the potential donor is not the right person to see, why they wouldn't want to hear from you, or why they wouldn't want to give to your organization. They'll say things like, this isn't the best time to ask them. They just sold their business, and even though they're flush with cash, they wouldn't want to hear about your organization. Be careful to discern what's behind this advice. Is it their own insecurities or maybe a hidden agenda, like they intend to contact them or feel they're better to contact them? Don't get me wrong, it's important to do your homework before reaching out to a donor and find out all you can about them and their current situation, but be careful not to take too much outside advice that it either becomes overwhelming or it undermines what you have intended your time to be with the donor. If it feels right, be bold and send the invitation. Obstacle number two, the obstinate gatekeeper. A gatekeeper is someone who acts as a shield or buffer between their boss and the public. The role is becoming very common in offices of business executives and entrepreneurs, and even faith leaders like pastors. These various leaders will hire gatekeepers to keep out people like you, individuals who they believe are just wanting to get into their pocketbook. As a result, you'll need to try extra hard to get to and through the gatekeeper. In many cases, you can't ever get to the donor without going through the gatekeeper and an impenetrable wall has been built around the donor. I found great success in being nice to the gatekeepers and even earning their trust, respect and confidence. I've asked them about family members, personal struggles and even prayed with them all in an effort to get to know them better. The key here is to genuinely get to know them and not manipulate them. 
Some who started out so obstinate warmed up to me and even became advocates on my behalf with their bosses. In some cases, I've had to find ways to get to the donor by going around the gatekeeper. And in one case, I found others who knew the donor and got an email address and started the discussion that way. Both ways may take longer, but if you get the appointment to build a lasting relationship with the person, that is your goal. Then know that the old adage, anything worth having is worth waiting for, applies here. Stay patient. Obstacle number three, the negative Nelson. You'll face several obstacles once you've made it to the appointment with the donor as well. The reality is there are a number of ways the donor or potential donor can respond to you and one of those ways is with a negative attitude. It seems like no matter what idea or strategy you propose, they have a negative response or put a negative spin on it. A negative Nelson seems to find the rain cloud in every rainbow. They will attempt to punch holes in whatever you present. My advice is to find ways to first get them talking about what organizations they like and look for ways to piggyback on the things that they like about those organizations and show how you do similar things to those. Also, look for ways to make your plans or ideas the ideas or plans of the donor. Start with the problem your organization has created to address. Find out how they would solve the problem. See if there are similarities to how you are solving the problem or similarities in methods, plans, and strategies you use. Then let them know what you're doing in a way they feel it was their idea. That gives you immediate buy-in and circumvents the negative emotions and negative vibes a negative Nelson can create. Obstacle number four, the overthinking Oscar. There have been times when in meeting with a donor, they take what I'm presenting and take it to a totally different direction. This often comes from reading too much into the facts, figures, or even strategies, overthinking the issue. The overthinking Oscar can often see things in a presentation that I never intended. They can worry or be concerned about something important in, or even something obscure or minute. That can cause your presentation to go sideways and possibly even go on a rabbit trail. And you either lose control of the discussion or you run out of time and never get to the heart of your presentation, let alone the close. When dealing with someone who overthinks something too much, letting them know that you have experts involved in your organization whose job it is to look out for those issues raised and to eliminate those concerns. People like lawyers, CPAs, tax accountants, doctors, and experts in the field you're focusing in on. Bringing into the picture someone who understands the situation more than even them often will allow you to gain back control and keep your presentation on track. Or you can say, that's a great issue or great concern and I'll bring it back to my expert to address or solve. Overthinkers tend to also focus on the negative, but with the right facts can be turned around to see there is a solution and at least a light at the end of the tunnel. Obstacle number five, the indecisive Irene. In many presentations, an indecisive Irene comes to the surface. That's someone who can't make a decision as to whether they can or will help you with the opportunity or need, and they avoid closure like the plague. They often start with numerous questions, attempting to poke holes in your case, much like negative Nelson or overthinking Oscar. But this is in an attempt to never make it to the bottom line. They would rather not have to get to the point where you ask them to give because making a, a decision is never easy for them. If you make it through the presentation and they ask, they may ask for more time sometimes using a spouse as an excuse or even with faith-based givers may ask to pray about it. You're obligated to allow them time to talk to their spouse or pray, but that only delays your answer. There are times I've wished the person would just say no rather than drag me along forever. The indecisive Irene will avoid the callback, email, or letter. They will keep putting you off as long as possible. I've spent weeks, months, or even years waiting for a response from someone. I've kept people on mailing lists long past when they should have been removed, and I've put my hope in someone when there should never have been hope. 
No matter what, it's important to push the indecisive Irene to the point of closure. Look for ways to keep things in your court and not theirs. Never let them end by saying, hey, well, I'll, well, I'll get back to you because they never will. Respond by saying, you know, this is my busiest time of the year. How about if I call you on Tuesday about the same time? Will that work? And if they can't talk then, keep trying a time. Even have your calendar out to nail down a time. Don't let them run you around. Push for closure, especially if they say that they will help. Don't allow them to go online or send a check because it might never happen. Let them know, I'll be in your area next week. Can I pick up the check then? It's never easy to be that forward, but indecisive Irene requires that you be that way. Obstacle number six, the overly optimistic Olivia. I do major donor weekends, and sometimes at the end of those weekends, I have someone who optimistically makes a commitment which is way beyond their means. This can be anywhere from 100000 to $10 million. These people are well-intentioned, but they're always just this close to hitting it big or so close to their ship coming in. They will listen to your presentation, and you feel they genuinely like what they hear. Then they make a commitment that is far beyond what they're capable of giving, and you have trouble taking them seriously. I met a person who had a remarkable product, and they were hoping to sell it to a large chain. It was their belief that the chain was close to purchasing this idea to use. The person took appointments with representatives of our organization, even attended multiple major donor events, making commitments as small as $10 million and as large as $100 million. This started a decade ago, and the chain has never purchased the product for use in their properties. Optimistic Olivia may fulfill those commitments if she ever hits it big, but we've given up hope that any of those commitments will come in. My advice here is pretty simple. Treat the person with kindness and appreciation, but don't expect the money to ever show up. Save yourself the headache and try challenging them to start giving smaller amounts until it, you actually get a commitment fulfilled. You know I really hope your appointments go smoothly and you don't run into any of the people I've mentioned, but that's honestly unlikely. I hope you found the strategies in this video to be helpful. If you did, hit the like button. Also add a comment below if you have met these obstacles before, how you overcome those obstacles, and if you feel my advice better prepared you. As a fun exercise, let me know you got this far in the video. Type the word obstacles in the comment section below. If you're interested in joining me in making a change in our world and even for eternity, please hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. If you want to find out what to do and say during a presentation, watch this video and raise more money than ever. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you. See you in the next video.